everyone, so today I am here to do a video that I've totally been putting off, but this is kind of the last opportunity I'm going to get to film it, and that is my bookshelf tour. I am going to college in September, like I've been saying in every single video ever, and when I leave, my parents are going to be moving to a new house, which means these books and bookshelves and everything are going to be getting packed up. Uh, probably within the year or so, to move to a different house, and by then I'll probably reorganize them in a new way. So, um, I figured this was kind of my last opportunity to show you guys these shelves. So I have three bookshelves. I have this one, I have this little skinny one, and I have one in my closet. And for the most part, it is organized as series, standalones, and overflow shelves, which are books that I want to keep but they just simply don't fit or like I don't care about them enough or they're a really big series or something like that. An overflow shelf. Books I want to keep but I just don't have room for. They have been organized like this for quite a while. Um, I will every once in a while I'll like reorganize like each individual shelf to make it either a rainbow or like authors or just however I find aesthetically pleasing. Right now they aren't really in any particular order. They're kind of separated by genre, but I have had this shelf as series, this shelf as standalone, and that shelf as overflow for months now. So this is kind of an accurate representation of what these shelves have been in my videos. But anyways, enough rambling, I'm going to get right on in to showing you guys my bookshelves. Alright, so here is a quick overview of my bookshelf. Um, honestly, it is usually quite a bit more full than this, as well as a bit more organized, but because I have so many books in boxes to go to college, they are looking a little sparse and also a little less organized than usual. But starting at the top, here we have my manga collection. I'm not going to go up there and show you guys each thing because they are totally buried on top of each other. But obviously I have quite a lot of Naruto, that is my favorite series. I also have a lot of D. Grey Man. I love Tokyo Ghoul, which is why it's on display over there. Also over here we have my Death Note, uh, Black Butler, Fullmetal Alchemist, my Clamp, and Vampire Night and Orin High School Host Club. So yes, and also this is where my mugs and uh, candles and stuff that don't really fit on my shelf go just to make it look a little more decorated. This first shelf is mostly kind of dystopians and like, I don't know, kind of books that I read more in my childhood for the most part. And we also have this little candle that, I don't know, I have it, so I can't even burn it, but I have it. So on this shelf we have The Hunger Games, uh, Maze Runner, Legend, Divergent, The Unquiet, and The Mortal Instruments, and The Infernal Devices, and The Bane Chronicles. The only book here that I didn't read when I was like in middle school is The Unquiet, which I read recently, but it is a dystopian, so I figured it kind of went on this shelf. Moving down, we are kind of going into fantasy slash urban fantasy slash like, I don't know, just kind of fantasy, I guess. Not really high fantasy yet, except for a couple of books, but like, sort of fantasy. Also over here we have my little elephant piggy bank that my grandma made me. It's full of change right now, which is great. And on this shelf we have the Ryria Revelation series and its prequel series Captive Prince, Lord of the Rings, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, the Graceling Realm trilogy, uh, the Raven Boys, and the Scorpio races also by Maggie Steve Otter, but that's a standalone but it's there because it's with Maggie Steve Otter, the Rose and the Dagger and the Dawn and the Wrath on the Dawn, and then all of Cassandra Rose Clark's books that I have. to the main shelf that you guys see during my videos. So obviously we have my Espeon and then we have this little thing that my friend made me that says bitch I'm fabulous with Link. So she made me that. It's cute. And on this shelf we can see it is mostly high fantasy. Um, over in the corner over here we have the last of my Sarah J Mass books because I got rid of the Throne of Glass series but we have Akatar and 
Acomath. I don't know what that is, whatever. Then we have a bunch of really gigantic high fantasy books right here that I have yet to read. Then we have the Lunar Chronicles, the Fallen Kingdoms, the Winner's Curse, Winner's Crime trilogy, and all of Brandon Sanderson's books that I have so far. So the Mistborn trilogy, the Reckoners trilogy, and the beginning of that spin-off series for the Mistborn. down onto this shelf. This is kind of, I don't really know, kind of fantasy, kind of sci-fi, kind of Rick Riordan, you know. And on this shelf we have my mug of bookmarks. It's a Naruto mug. I got it at a like thrift store kind of thing, so I don't know where you can get this. I have all my bookmarks. I don't use bookmarks very often, but when I do, it's these. And on this shelf we have the first five books of the Harry Potter series because those are mine. I don't have the last two because I haven't found them for cheap yet and I'm not buying them full price. Then we have the Eon Duology, the Chaos Walking Trilogy, the Unwind Dystology, and then all of Rick Riordan's books that I have. I don't really care about his new books that much, um, especially because I didn't even care that much about this like spin-off series right here. I just love Percy Jackson a lot. So I have the Percy Jackson series and the spin-off series from that, but I don't have any of his newer books. And down here, I think I'm gonna have to like kind of move you for this one, because it's kind of far down. Ah oh, yes, here we go. So this is the bottom shelf. This is the shelf that you guys just don't get to see very often. Um, and it's kind of uh, the end of the kind of fantasy, I guess paranormal, and then going into, I don't know, standalone contemporary books that didn't fit on the standalone shelf. And the only knickknack on this shelf is this candle. It's a fake candle with a light in it because I can't actually burn real candles because I'm allergic to smoke. Um, and my friend got me this, so thank you. So on this shelf, obviously, we have my Twilight series, my babies, and the new one. Woo! We also have the host right over here, but it's separated by this one book called Beastly by... I don't know who it's by, but because it's black, so it kind of fits. Then we have all the light we cannot see, and then just tons of contemporary books, and then like the Night Circus and Warm Bodies is mixed in there, and like the Golem and the Ginny. So, and Ready Player One. So this is just kind of a mess, but I thought it looked nice, which is why it's like this. So the next area of this shelf is actually like on top of this skinny shelf. I have the Ultimate Guide to the American Museum of Natural History, which I got while I was in New York and I visited the museum and it was like my favorite thing in the entire world. So obviously I got this awesome guide for it. It's super cute. I love flipping through it and remembering everything there because that museum was definitely like the highlight of my New York trip. And then moving down here, we have my K-pop album collection. I'm definitely going to be making a video very soon showing all of these, especially because I'm getting a couple new ones very soon. But here's kind of an overview of them. And then we come down to this shelf. This shelf used to be like a favorites shelf, but then it kind of got mauled when I was doing books for college because I wanted to bring a lot of favorites with me. So now it's honestly just a mishmash of books that I have put together because I thought they looked okay, I guess, together. But obviously we have some favorites like I Am A Cat and The Last Illusion, as well as a bunch of Neil Gaiman books and Memoirs of a Geisha and The Vegetarian, and then we have my Richard Wright books. And I love Richard Wright, so I'm slowly doing my little collection of him. Next we come down to the Murakami shelf. This is also a shelf that you see in a lot of my videos, and we have my little guy right here. If you didn't know, I absolutely love bats, and I can't remember what this is called, but I got it a couple of years ago while I was up in New Hampshire. It's a little bat with a syringe, and I just thought it was adorable, and he always sits on my shelf, so. But yes, this is my Murak current Murakami collection. It is not yet complete. I have two novels and I think three collections of short stories that I have to get. Um, if you're wondering what these editions are with the matching spines, they are the vintage classics or international editions. I believe vintage international editions. And I have one of the old vintage covers, so I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I really like that cover though, so who knows. But if you are wondering, I have my Murakami books organized in 
the publication order in Japan, not in America. I don't know if it's different in America, but I went by the Japanese publication dates. Um, I used to try to do it in a rainbow, but it was just not a rainbow at all. So I decided to do publication order. Okay, so now we are bringing it down to the shelf that is right below the Murakami shelf. This, again, used to kind of be organized, but it doesn't really make sense anymore. So basically we have my Sarah Beth Durst books, um, Water for Elephants, Gone Girl, You, and I Have the Right to Destroy Myself. Um, it used to be like psychological thrillers, but then I had nowhere to put my Sarah Beth Durst books. So I put them there and then I didn't know what to do with Water for Elephants, so I put that there. So this is just kind of a mishmash. It's kind of darker books, I guess. I think they look nice together, but they definitely used to have more order to them. So now we are down to the, like, kind of bottom, not yet bottom, second from bottom shelf. Again, this used to have more order to it. It used to be kind of a rainbow, but then I took a lot of books out of the rainbow, and then I didn't know what to do with any of the books. Basically, that's my story of this entire shelf, is I took a ton of books out, I didn't know what to do. But the beginning is kind of a rainbow, that's such a nice little rainbow, isn't it? And then it goes into my dark books, I guess. But this is where I have all of my Carlos Ruiz Zafon books um, of his Shadow of the Wind series. Then I have Marcus Zusax, The Book Thief, and I Am the Messenger. A Brief History of Seven Killings, Philomena, and The Geek Feminist Revolution. And then coming down to the very bottom shelf is my Jodi Picoult collection. This originally is on my um, overflow shelf, but I had so much space that it actually fit here. Um, if you guys didn't know, I feel like you probably wouldn't. I actually absolutely love Jodi Picoult. Um, she's one of my favorite authors, probably. I have read many of her books. This is the collection of ones I own. Um, but yeah, I actually really, really love her. I haven't read a lot of her books recently because I haven't really been in the mood for them. But this is my little Jodi Picoult collection. And here's just another quick little pan up of this shelf. Okay, so now we are going to move into my closet, which is over here. It's a walk-in closet, um, and this is where I have my overflow shelf. So here's a quick overview of it. Yeah, the lighting's going to be kind of weird because we're in a closet, so. So to begin with, the very, very top shelf is where I keep my Kenneth Opel books, who he used to be my favorite author when I was a kid, so I have a lot of his books. Pikachu is kind of guarding the castle, and then we have some scrapbooks, yearbooks, stuff like that. And then we come on to this shelf, which is basically what it's called, just an overflow shelf of books that didn't fit on my regular bookshelf or books I just didn't like enough to make room for kind of thing. But we also have my collection of graphic novels and comic books over here. And then yeah, this is the novels. Some of these I just honestly don't even like, but I didn't have anywhere to put and I can't get rid of them. Next, this shelf is half classics, half overflow, I guess. So we have a ton of my classics that I have read and haven't read right over here. We have a stack of, like, other Lord of the Rings books, as well as my Charles Dickens and uh, Shakespeare. And then just a bunch of, like, overflow books that just didn't fit anywhere, I guess. Um, so we have, like, Noggin by Corey Whaley and, like, Fifty Shades of Grey on the same shelf as, like... The essential tales of Edgar Allan Poe and like the picture of Dorian Gray and Sherlock Holmes and stuff like that. So yeah. Okay, so the next shelf that we have is mostly childhood books. Most of these are just books I read in my childhood, except for we have Armada over there and Picking Cotton, which I just didn't know where to put. But, like, we have all of my Darren Shan books. I feel like a lot of people actually have no idea that Darren Shan is my literal bae. I love him so much. I've read basically everything he wrote before, like, 2010. And then I stopped reading him. But I really, really love him. His series are a staple in my childhood. I love them so, so much. So that is my little Darren Shan shrine kind of thing. We have the Spiderwicks Chronicles and the Red Pyramid by Rick Riordan, which I didn't read in my childhood. But it is, like, a middle grade novel, so I just put it there. Then we have all of Cornelia Funks. We have one Warriors book in the Phantom Toll Booth, as well as the Water Mirror trilogy, which I absolutely lo loved. And then Armada and Picking Cotton, which I read recently. Okay, so now we 
we are on to this little shelf that is not completely filled. Over here we have my very small collection of movies. I don't really watch movies, but every once in a while people will get me them as like Christmas presents or birthday presents, and I do watch them. So we have all of my Avatar The Last Airbender books 1, 2, and 3. We have my Hunger Games movie, Hobbit The Unexpected Journey, all of the Twilight movies. Now You See Me, which I haven't watched yet, but it was my friend's favorite movie, so she got it for me to make me watch it. Never watched it. Now we have Princess Tutu The Complete Collection, which is an anime I really, really loved as a kid, but we couldn't really like find it anywhere. I would read the comics for it. I really wanted to watch the show, and I couldn't find it anywhere to watch, so I had to actually buy the DVDs. And over here, well right there are two books I can't get rid of at my local book swap, so I have to take them to the library to get rid of. But, the rest of these books are kind of, I guess, TBR books. They're books that I, quite a few of them I was actually going to take to college, so here you can see books that I'm no longer taking to college. Um, basically, I really looked at my boxes and I went, this is way too many books, and I took out a whole bunch. And these, they, it's not necessarily, I'm not going to read these, I'm just not going to read them immediately. So I took them out and I put them here to kind of like visually remind me that I have these books that I should be reading. Um, so yeah, these will be books that I'll read later or maybe before I go to school. Who knows? But yeah, we have like The Bone Season, Written in Red, Going Bovine, Cloud Atlas, The Valley of Dolls, Through Black Spruce, Legacy of Kings, The Grace Keepers, The Calligrapher's Daughter, The Crimson Petal, and The White, The Moore's Account, and Beauty is a Wound. Basically a lot of these books I had been planning on reading soon, but then I fell into a major reading slump and never got to them. And some of them I was going to take to college and then I was like, I need some room in my suitcase. So I took them out. And now we're on to the final shelf way down here. So over here is where I keep all of my mass market paperbacks. Um, I hate mass market paperbacks, so I actually, this entire shelf used to be full of them. But I got rid of a ton of them because I just, I can't stand mass market paperbacks. And over there we also have just two like smaller books, which is Tuesdays with Maury by Mitch Albom, The Perks of Being a of Wolf, of Wallflower. Then we have Garth Nick's Sabriel Trilogy, um, Karen Marie Monning's Fever series, Dune and Dune Messiah, which I have yet to read, and the entirety of the Game of Thrones books, which I have bought and also got as like presents quite a few times, but um, I have yet to read them. I honestly don't even know if I'm ever going to, so I might get rid of those. So, and over here we have kind of textbooks. Um, as well as like photo albums and yearbooks and stuff like that. So we have like my sign language textbooks, my German textbooks and German novels, um, my notebooks, my Korean textbooks. We have my yearbook, which I yes, I covered up the name of my high school because, you know. And then we have a photo album. So yeah, this is basically like my little corner of books that are actually for like learning or like memory keeping and stuff like that. So yes, that is the entirety of my overflow shelf. Here is another quick overview of it. Anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed this bookshelf tour. I know every booktuber ever puts one of these up, but I always enjoy watching them, so I figured you guys would enjoy it too. Sorry if you wanted me to pull out every single book, but I find that those are kind of tedious. So I figured just like an overview of these shelves would be good enough. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I love you all and I'll see y'all soon. Bye!